Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I will define what is the hard surface modeling by discussing some of its attributes and differentiating it from organic modeling. Hard surface modeling is a 3D modeling technique used to create machines, vehicles, weapons and only non-living objects with hard and static surfaces. Most man-made objects in our everyday surroundings would be categorized as hard surface objects. As you can see here we have sci-fi 3D model gun which is considered as hard surface model. Also as you can see here we have a laptop and it's an example of a hard surface object. It is made of hard artificial materials. It cannot be bent or folded like a shirt. In Blender, hard surface objects are typically defined by more technical features such as sharp edges, flat surfaces and separation between loose parts. They are rigid bodies or objects that are restricted in motion to particular mechanical movement and do not deform. As we can see here, we have this Bugatti Chiron 3D model, which is modeled, and we have here a huge number of faces and vertices which make or create this great model. Things such as Clitted creatures and natural objects are not hard surface objects because their surfaces are usually soft and non static. For example, we have this human head sculpted. So let's go ahead to define what is organic modeling. Organic modeling is the opposite of hard surface modeling and it deals with things such as plants, animals, characters, and generally other living things, but also things such as skills, status, and car bodies. I know what you are thinking. Those last two don't, see, don't seem to fit in there at all. Categorizing clothes as organic modeling makes some sense. Since they are soft and foldable, but cars and status sound silly, the reason these are in the same category is not because of the nature of the objects, but because of how they appear in 3D modeling program. Here we have a typical organic model, which is Susanna or Monkey Head. This organic model has a different surface from the other hard surface models. As shown previously, it appears much more intricate and there aren't any sharp edges or flat surfaces as you can see in this model. Instead, the entire object is covered with a grid of polygons to fully understand, understand the difference between organic and hard surface modeling. We must get a little more technical. This model and this is organic model and we can compare between them. Some artists will argue that people of typical hard surface model with a static surface, but it can still become partially organic. Do you remember that scene from the Hulk where the Hulk bends the barrel of a tank backwards and points it at the driver's head as shown here. And this scene is from the Hardball Hulk movie. According to some artists, this type of animation will turn the hard surface barrel of the tank into an organic model. This is this because making an animation, an animation that requires a model to have some features that are typical of organic modeling. Understanding this argument can be a little difficult, so let's take a close look at a simple example to help us understand why a bending animation requires a model to become partially organic. Let's imagine an aluminum panel 
into variations as shown here. In this first variation, it is completely straight and flat, like typical hard surface object. In the second variation, we dropped a heavy metal ball on it and bent the surface. To achieve this look, we need to subdivide the surface into many small faces, each of which is slightly angled. This creates a lattice-like pattern on surface, which is typical of organic objects. Now, even though the metal surface is still hard to touch, it can be described as having an organic surface. So, let's define hard surface objects in Blender. It's time to jump into, into defining what is the difference between hard surface object and organic object. We are going to focus on hard surface modeling, but it is important to understand the differences between the two modeling styles. So let's go over those features one by one and compare them to organic modeling. So let's look at the, this model, this tank 3D model. Concerning edges, this figure shows a side by side comparison. We have these two figures in comparison of hard surface model at the left and an organic model at the right. On this figure, the first thing that identifies a hard surface object is the sharpness of its edges. We don't see any sharp edges on the right on the right hand object as shown here. Instead, every edge appears to flow and bend smoothly. Most of the time, edges and hard surface models we also have thin bevels. As shown here, we have thin bevels. And also thin bevels for this organic model. A bevel is a slightly rounded edge that looks as though it has been sanded and smoothed. This adds a touch to touch of realism since there are no perfectly sharp edges in real life. As you can see here on this model, bevels are used to simulate real edges in 3D. And we have here different edges for the, this tank and for the muzzle and have different parts. And they also affect how light reflects from the edges to allow and here we have light reflection on this edge. If game development, in game development bevels are often avoided because they cost a lot, meaning that they add a lot of polygons to the model which makes them harder to render. Because of their high cost, bevels are often baked as normal maps so that they are visible on the surface, but they aren't part of 3D model. Apart from realism, bevels can also be useful in many other ways, as we will see later in our modeling projects. Unlike organic models, hard surface models tend to have a lot of flat surfaces, as shown here. We have a lot of flat surfaces all over these different parts of the tank and also for this sculpted human head. This is different from organic models because most organic surfaces appear soft and curvy as shown here on this human head, on this human face. Organic surfaces consist of many smaller faces with the slight angular differences between them, which creates a lattice-like pattern on the mesh. This lattice pattern is usually a dead giveaway of an organic style surface. Of course, this doesn't mean that we will never see a curvy surface on a hard surface model as shown here. We have another 3D model. Uh, it's a part of uh, those loose parts of the tank. This tank turret is a good example of hard surface object. 
with an organic like surface. It is most definitely hard surface object, but the mesh pattern looks a lot like something you would see on an organic model because of this one. Because of this one modeling the tank turret, we can use tools what you would normally use for organic modeling. Among the, some techniques used to create and model this, uh, this essential part of the tank, we can use proportional editing if we want to deform the tank as shown here. You can create a half of a cylinder, you can cut it down. This uh, part, you take just the half of the cylinder, then you try to use the proportional editing for this uh, top part. In order to make this shape, we want to deform the tank turret to make it slightly uh, pointier in the front. The tool can be activated by clicking on proportional editing objects as shown here. And I have a lot of tutorials on how to model and uh, also to use the technique of proportional editing to create some different objects. You can check out many different previous videos on my YouTube channel. I have created a few months, few months ago. Also, uh, some of the features of the hard surface modeling. We have edge loops, another feature typical of hard surface modeling that we haven't mentioned yet is the non-continuity of the edge loops. An edge loop is generally a continuous line of edges in theory. Loops should be connected end to end, but even then this is not the case. We can select a line of edges, vertices or faces in the section where they are continuous. This can be observed by using the select loop tool in Blender. We can select loop by, by hovering over an edge and holding Alt. So go over here, let's try this technique on this propeller. As shown here, we have different edges. For example, by clicking, by hovering the, the mouse cursor over edge over an edge of these uh, edges and clicking and uh, hold down alt shift and you can and you can see that you have uh, selected these uh, edges as shown here and you selected different edges on a typical hard surface model most edges most edge loops are going to be shortened and connected and also, for example, like this, let's drop it uh, down over there. Holding Alt, you can select these different uh, edge loops which are rounded all over this uh, region. So let's try to select the, this uh, tool to select loop. On organic model, on organic model, the select loop tool would give us different results, as shown here. So let's try it. Switch to face selection. For example, go over here by selecting this face and clicking Alt at the same time. We have uh, that selected this uh, loop. The selection is long and usually continuous, uh, meaning that the selection has no beginning or end. Sometimes the selection is surprising. Be intricate as you can see on the ear of the subdivided monkey head. And here is another project that I have created a few moments ago. Concerning the loose parts, another interesting thing that is common to hard surface objects and less common on organic objects is that most of the time the object will consist of several loose parts. Loose parts are individual items with fully connected geometry.
as you can see here we have this 3d model robot head and you can also separate in many different parts as shown here uh, let's try to separate for example grab uh, along the x-axis for example as shown here also let's uh, separate this uh, part of the googles separate it means you grab a bit uh, along the y-axis as shown here as you can see uh, we have uh, different loose parts which uh, can create uh, your 3d model and this shows an explo exploded view of the artifice objects with all its loose parts and these parts are separated in loose parts if we select any face on an object and move it the face will pull a few other connected faces with it this will deform the mesh creating an unwanted result